Hi, thank you for tuning in to Reubet Support YouTube channel. My name is Mayank Bhatti and in this video we are going to talk about sites. So this is gonna be our agenda for today. First, we'll talk about what is a site in Still Connect world, how to create and delete a site, different settings at the site level, followed by a quick demo. So let's start with the site overview. Now site can be referred to as a branch, HQ or a DC location for a company or an organization. As soon as I create an organization, a default site will always be created with the name HQ. And of course, we can change or edit or delete this site as per the requirements. So for example, if I am owner of an XYZ company and I have three remote branch offices, one HQ location and a DC location, then I'll have total of five sites in my organization and I can install uh, more than one appliance on those sites and also configure high availability. So without wasting much of the time, let's discuss all these things in a quick demo. I'm logged into our lab still connect manager. Now, if you look on the left pane, you will notice sites under network design. All details related to the sites will be found here. As you can see, when we created an organization in our last video, this site was by default created with the same city, country and time zone information as our organization. Now, before moving further, let me show you how to create a new site. On the top right, click on the add site button, new site provide all these details and submit. Also if you have tons of sites to create then you can do bulk site creation by importing a CSV file in this format. To delete a site you can click on the site on the top right under actions drop down menu. Click on delete site and this will delete our site. Here you can see all the sites in tabular format and if you want you can also visualize them on the map. If you want to search a site then you can type the name of the site and it will search for you. Moving further under zones you can stretch your layer to zones from one site to another site if that site is not managed by Steel Connect Manager. And if it is managed by Steel Connect Manager then it will automatically make remote zones available in a site which doesn't require manual configuration. Next, we have Xlane. We will only use Xlane if we require multiple zones in a gateway which does not support VLAN operation on the wire. A typical use case is to enable an access point to broadcast SSIDs on different zones when it isn't connected to a switch which supports tagged VLANs. So for example, if Xlane is enabled on this site, then the access point connected to the gateway is able to broadcast SSIDs to multiple VLANs although it is configured as a single zone. Moving on to the next tab, here we can configure DNS server which is not mandatory. If you have a DHCP uplink, then the DNS will be assigned by the DHCP server. Failing that, public DNS servers will be used. If you prefer, you can use your own DNS server here which will override all the DNS servers. You can also do DNS routing to resolve domain labels with the internal DNS server. Now, Riverbed Tech recommends to manually use Google public DNS servers, for example, 8888 or 8844 if you are not using your internal DNS server. Next, under WAN Auto VPN tab, you can configure internet breakout preference and again, we will cover this in another video. We can also make a gateway do outbound NAT. By default, it is disabled which means gateway will do the netting. You can also enable it when you want your upstream router or firewall to handle the NAT. You can change the topology to hub and spoke using this option which makes this site as a spoke which is supposed to be connected to a hub. Now as you all know that by default, gateways will form full mesh auto VPN tunnels over port 4500. You can change the port as desired from here, but make sure if you are changing for one site then you have to change for all the sites if full mesh is being used and also allow that port on the firewall. Agent settings is enabled by default on the default site which was created automatically while creating an organization. By default, all the agents will get IP address in this subnet. 
Now under radius, you can configure your radius authentication server. You can also select the size of a site from small, medium and large depending upon the requirement. Last but not the least, under location tab, you can edit and make changes to the site tag and location details. Thank you for watching this video.